Hello, it's Infect again and today I want to show you some cool ways to use Reason's newest synthesizer object when making bass sounds because it's actually really amazing for that. And so here are some of the sounds that we'll be making today. <laughs> And then here's what those sounds might sound like in an actual track. So most of you Reason experts and subscribers to this channel have probably already seen that object is super powerful for making all kinds of instruments and making whole songs with just those instruments from object. But one feature that I haven't really heard anyone else talk about is how we can use it in bass genres like dubstep to make really unique bass sounds. And it can go from subtly rounding out raw sounding waveforms like square or saw waves to giving your sound some super satisfying metallic characteristics that are useful in all kinds of bass genres really. So first I'll start by showing you how to set it up and for that I'll just send the sound from an old classic synthesizer into it which is Maelstrom. Fun fact Maelstrom came out in 2002 and it's still a super good synthesizer. So I'm gonna start here with a Maelstrom as promised. Then I'm gonna actually put it into a combinator and then we also need object here and I'm gonna hold shift before I drop it in here so that nothing gets automatically wired. So you can see here nothing is wired right now. And then what we can do is we can disconnect the main output of Maelstrom. So that would normally go to the mixer here and then we want to take the main output and just go into object with it and then from object the output goes back to the mixer here of the combinator. So now if we put some MIDI notes and it's important here to put the MIDI notes on the combinator. The reason why we made a combinator is so that both of these instruments receive the MIDI notes because otherwise you won't hear anything if only Maelstrom gets the MIDI notes. So we'll put some MIDI notes here, headphones and I also set the tempo to 140. What I want to do is to just make kind of a really basic sound to send into it just so you can hear really well what it's doing. So I'm going to select a square wave and we are going to do a bit of an LFO and maybe select just this shape and set it to sync and then do quarter notes. And object also tends to be really quiet so I'm just going to turn it up all the way. Alright, and now we have a really good basic sound to start with because, I mean, you're familiar with how a square sounds. And then what we need to do in object for the setup is we need to turn the level all the way down and the impact all the way down because we don't actually want to hear those. We only want our Maelstrom sound to basically be the exciter for the resonating synthesizer. And for object, I'm not going to dive super deeply into what every control does because there's actually a really good video on that on the Reason Studios channel on this channel. So you can go watch that. But I'm going to tell you which ones are relevant for making those bass sounds that I'm talking about. So first of all, um, what I like to do is I like to use the randomized parameter a lot and then use the controls here in the bottom section to actually bring it back into a more controlled sound. So sometimes it sounds really wild when you just just press randomize. So let's let's just start by doing that. So I'll press randomize. And already we're getting like a really good texture, but I find that it's ringing out too long. So if I don't like that, uh, if I don't like the general texture of it, let's just press randomize again. And one cool thing here is we can select the degree of randomization. So if we wanted to go super crazy, we can do 100%. Or if we want to just create a small variation of the initial one, we can just do a little bit. Then another cool thing is if you like what you're hearing, you can press OK. But if you randomize a few times and you actually want to come back to what it was before, you just press X and it'll come back to what you had. And this is really handy. So right away here, I want to put just a few effects just to make this sound a little bit more thick sounding, I guess. So I'm going to add here a Scream 4 distortion just to beef it up a bit. I like it on tape mode. And then maybe we can add an EQ as well. The first thing I notice here is now the decay is too long because it's ringing out really long. So I will just tighten that a bit. And then we can also play with the damping setting. 
to get kind of just the right amount of ringing on the highs, the mids and the lows. So like that we can just tighten it up nicely. And so now if you compare actually how this sounded before, I'm just gonna do kind of a quick AB setup so you can hear what it was like before and after. Cause now I can solo, this is the processed sound here. And this is the dry sound. So yeah, this was just a square wave, right? But then with object, we're giving it that really nice, just metallic characteristic, and I really love that. So that's already, that's what I mean. Super powerful. So now we can play a bit with the dispersion, pitch mod, and collision. Sometimes you can get really nice results out of that. Right now we have this very metallic sound. Um, we can make that a bit less metallic by just playing with the collision and pitch mod, for example. Give it this kind of fluttering sound. Pitch mod too. I kind of like the openness of that, just the bright, fluttery sound without being just super straight up metallic. Then we have the dispersion. So then another control that can be fun to play with is up here you see the pitch. So you can set the pitch independently from the pitch of Maelstrom because right now they're played by the same MIDI notes so they're on the same pitch. So you can play this maybe high. Maybe three semitones up can sound cool, especially when we come back to the super metallic sound without the collision and the pitch mod. Actually, I really like it just on zero here. What I want to do is I want to automate the pitch bend here of the combinator. And as you can see, it'll move the pitch bend both on Maelstrom and on Object. First of all, I have to set it to the same range. So now I have seven on Maelstrom. That's the default. So I'm just going to set it to maybe an octave and then also an octave on Object. Okay. And now if I edit the automation here, I can draw in a pitch bend curve and I can say I want it to go from something higher to zero. And then I can create whatever curve I want. So maybe I'll create two clips here. So one that ramps down from zero and then one that goes maybe up and down like this. Here, I think it would be good to also have a bit of context, like what can we actually do with the sound? So I'm gonna just put some drums in as well. Okay, so now we have some nice basic drums set up. So now we have a good idea of like how we can do the flow and things like that. So now we could go back into Maelstrom as well and play a little bit with the flow, like maybe an eighth note flow could be cool. So And because we have this metallic sound from object, we can also add a very subtle metallic sound to the Maelstrom sound already, like with a comb filter and just like no resonance, just a very tiny comb filter. Give it that really nice, just even more, like the way that the two are phasing now is just really interesting to me. So now we can go back into object and maybe do some more randomization. So we can go click randomize again. So I really like how that sounds and you could hear just from me clicking randomize again and again, we can get a lot of different variations for a sound out of this that sound like really different in very intricate ways and a lot of different kind of textures. So that's what I love so much about it. You can just randomize and get all these really cool sounds from a very basic sound. Like don't forget what we sent into it was this. <laughs> Okay, next up I want to show you the templates here. So basically instead of having these randomized resonators here, we can also go and select a template for them. So for example, there's one for a bell that sounds like a bell. On bass sounds, it obviously doesn't sound like a straight up bell. You can get some cool textures out of that. So if we just want like subtle variations of this bell template, we can randomize it and set it to like a low percentage. Uh, 
Oh, I actually really like that, so I'm gonna go with that. All right, so sweet, now we have this, and you can go through all the different templates as well. There are some really good ones, like I like the metal ones quite a lot too, so that'll come in handy for the next sound that we're gonna be making. So for the next sound, what I wanna do is to send an even shorter hit into it and do a bit more of a creative pattern with it. So just kind of like a like an impulse, basically, almost. So what we're gonna do is make it really fast, the LFO, and just send a one shot into it. And then we can even have just like a shape that's more impulse-like, like this. And then we also need to put some more so maybe a different midi note pattern down so i'm gonna do i'm gonna set this to a triplet grid and then do like a cool triplet pattern so i'll just do that's good and for this one effect that I also want to add is some OTT and for OTT I like to dial it in a bit because it's pretty pretty aggressive by default For this sound, we want to have actually a bit more decay time because I really want to bring out that tail of the metallic sound. So that's why we have this really short impact. We can make it even shorter. And then if I press randomize again and maybe even stronger randomization to get a longer tail. We can get these, we can emphasize the, the nice metallic tail, or we can also select one of the templates, and this is what I was saying, the, the metal template actually sounds really good. And on this sound, I also want to do less pitch bend, I want it to be a bit more static, so I'm just gonna remove that. Then we can also add a sub. I think it would be interesting to have the sub not go into object. So I'm gonna send that to a separate mixer channel here. Now we have a nice and clean sub in this third channel of the mixer. And what that allows us to do now is we can actually put some effects on both of these sounds together. So one thing I think that would be interesting would be to add a scream. And so now if I distort it maybe with tube get that really nice crunchy feel then i can play just a bit more with a randomized too to get that right metallic sound that i'm going for And for this sound, I think it's cool to have the low end a bit more tight and the high end a bit more open here with the damping. And then one more thing that I think would work well here is if we put a bit of a pitch envelope on the Maelstrom so that it has that ramp down almost 808 like. So we can set it to one shot and then increase the pitch here. And since that's on both the sub and the bass as well, it gives it that really nice sub feel that sounds really good live as well. We could even add a bit of EQ in here just to make it a little brighter. And then we can go back into the flow as well and maybe play with the notes a little. So yeah, I actually really love how that sounds. It has that really sick metallic sound to it. Good flow. Yeah, super happy with this sound. And then after messing around a bit more with these sounds, I got to a pretty cool sounding tune. So here's what that sounds like. And of course you can apply these techniques in a lot of different genres, even if it's not bass music, just the concept of sending sounds into object to modify them is really powerful. So hopefully this video will spark some new ideas for things you can experiment with.